Hey guys, coming at you from Fort Worth, Texas with this new Amazon Basics uh, $39 UPS and it is very simple and it's small. It is the 400VA 255 watt. Uh, so, for practical purposes you can ignore this 400 number and just think about the wattage 255. You want to add up all your equipment usage that you're going to plug into here and don't exceed that on the battery side. So the battery protected devices go in here and it's labeled and the uh, things you might have like laser printers or higher wattage uh, appliances or devices you're going to you're going to plug in here. And uh, this unit compared to the next level up units that they sell basically it does not have anything uh, except the outlets. There's no other, uh, there's no USB connection so you can't you know run software to program it or find out how it's doing or shut down your computer automatically with it. It just, it's just basic battery protection for uh, whatever devices, computers or lights you want to stick in here or electron other electronics maybe your TV or um, modem devices and let's see you might need to know here is um, well, there's only a handful of pages that are English the other languages take up most of the, the booklet and uh, when it when it when the powder power goes out the uh, power button here has an LED behind it and it will uh, flash and it beeps at the same time every 30 seconds and then when the battery wears out and finally gets down to its last few minutes then it'll uh, rapidly flash and it will rapidly beep every half second so I'm going to run through uh, a load on this and we'll see how it does okay so uh, the first I got a uh, monitor here plugged in and just sitting at idle now I've already charged this for overnight so it's been more than more than eight hours the uh, label on here says to charge it for eight hours to just guarantee that the battery internal battery is fully charged before you implement it my experience has been that you don't have to do that if you know you're most likely not going to have a power failure within the time that it would become fully charged so it's not a big deal if you will go ahead and deploy it and immediately plug in uh, devices and uh, what I've got here is a lamp with a 40 watt bulb and at the top I got a 150 watt bulb so we're just shy of about 200 watts total here with this lamp um, a quick note if you do plug things into the surge only side note that um, they are this is the always on power here and this side the battery side is controlled by the on off switch so let's move the lamp over to here and it's off now lamp is off and powered on you have to hold it for two seconds and then it'll turn on there it goes light is on and you'll see my watt usage now is just shy of 200 196 and um, to turn it off you have to hold it for two seconds let go shut off okay back on so I was going to say um, that 2.3 watts you see there is just the unit itself maintaining the battery at full charge. Uh, I, I did not get the monitor on here while it was charging to see how many watts it would pull, but uh, once it's fully charged it'll just draw about 2 watts just to stay alive with nothing powered on. Okay, let's, uh, let's get the timer going here and I will unplug it from the back here and it should start beeping here I'm gonna start it oops I hit that uh, button there okay so now we're unplugged from the wall I'll start the timer and again we're pulling 200 watts so close to its 255 watt maximum, so it shouldn't last too long. And um, okay, 
Okay, that's it. Um, just over uh, two minutes now. The weird thing about this was it didn't go into its rapid beeping. Uh, or actually, it didn't go into its, uh, its, it, its slow beeping, actually. It went right to rapid. Um, so what it should be doing is uh, twice every 30 seconds, and it never did that. Now, maybe if I had a smaller load on it, it would do that. So anyway, at, at 200 watts, you're looking at uh, not even three minutes, so pretty short-lived. Okay, um, anyway, let's restore power. Okay, it keeps the, the last known setting of the power switch on-off, that's good. Okay, so now realize that, uh, now I don't know what the actual, I didn't actually measure it here, but... Uh, Let's see, it's drawing uh, 203 watts, so from 100 and, I think it was 196 when the battery was fully charged, so now it's powering the lights and it's, uh, I'll just turn, I'll pull, unplug the light here, and so it runs at about 10 watts to kind of try to charge that internal battery which I'm just going to assume by the numbers on this sticker that it takes eight hours to fully charge it from dead. So that's, you know, the more expensive UPSs, uh, you know, what you pay for on those are a faster recovery time. You know, units that are costing, uh, you know, upwards of $500, you're going to get like a quick two to three hour recharge time and not have to wait around for eight hours in case you had a, another hit on your power and you wanted to use uh, you know, use your electronics while that power outage was happening. Um, okay, so let's uh, leave the lamp unplugged for now. Let's unplug this again and get that annoying alarm going. And I think if I read the instructions correctly, we can... Uh, actually, I'll just unplug it at the front this time. Should start beeping again. Okay, oh, there's this. Uh, there's the 30 seconds. So it has something to do with the load. It does calculate how much time is left internally, and if it's probably under, you know, two to three to four minutes, it does the rapid beeping. And if you have less load on the unit, then uh, you'll get the short, uh, the longer, I should say, longer 30 second beep intervals. Uh, if you find that beeping annoying, I believe you just tap it. Quickly press the power button twice. You can turn off or on the audible alarm. So if I tap it twice, there it acknowledged that I got it, and now it just blinks the LED and does no uh, alarm. So if you're using one of these uh, to power low low requirement devices, and it's happening while you're trying to sleep, you can walk up to it, tap it twice, and then let it do its thing while you sleep in peace. Um, Okay, back to normal. Okay, so um, I'll turn it off for now. One, two, it's off, and let's take a peek at the inside. There are four screws. Uh, I need a Phillips head. I just want to see how easy it is to replace the battery when the time comes two to three years. Um, usually on these unit, uh, cheap, cheap units, I find that the the failure rate is quite high on these electronics, not this, not the battery, but the electronics. And it's a, I don't know, it's roughly about one out of ten units just fail after the warranty period, you know, which is kind of why they're so cheap to begin with. So um, let's see how we can lift this off here. Let's try it the other way. Okay, so out here, this battery can just lift out here. Let's see. Yeah, it's it's all clear. It's just uh, sandwiched in the clamshell, and then you just unplug these two wires here and install your new battery. And this is a uh, 2.9 amp battery. So hopefully in the future. That will let you look up that battery.
before we get to crack it open so it looks like it just can lift up here and just unplug and plug in your new battery and go anyway so uh, the units again one out of about six or ten units fail pretty early on in the one to three year range that is not the fault of the battery and because I've, I've known this because when replacing uh, the batteries the first thing you want to do is try to replace the battery and if it doesn't uh, solve its uh, illness then um, then the unit's toast usually you just throw it out and then you can keep your new battery for the next unit possibly so anyway I'll really reassemble that okay so one more thing I wanted to share with you is I wanted to mount this on the wall maybe near a wall mounted switch in my patch panel so of course you want to hang it on the wall and there's no provision to do that so you really need some uh, mounting holes and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a uh, 3 8 inch drill bit I usually do a 3 8 inch for to match the size of like a sheet rock uh, screw head and that usually is just a little bit extra for a little more wiggle room and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to target the areas that have the biggest cavities so the absolute least chance if, if not any chance of touching anything metal once the screw head intrudes into the casing and uh, if you kind of match up what's going on here those two cavities will match up with uh, this point there's like some circles you can see now uh, if I were to drill right in the center of the circle I wouldn't have um, any extra room to put a little notch above it so I'm going to drill kind of as far south as I can from the circle and then I'll show you my, uh, how I'm going to make that notch up there and I'll do the same over here there's no circle but I'll just have to line it up as close as I can to match what I did over here okay let's get that done kind of eyeing it. I'm not really getting out a ruler and measure. I'm not getting it exact here, so... Okay. Got my two... Oh, there's one. There's a second one. And now I will... And yeah, they're not... They're off by about a... I don't think they were within a quarter of a millimeter. Well, maybe they're exact. Yeah, lucky. Okay, now let's switch over to the uh, smaller bit. And I'll kind of use this like a Dremel tool here. And we'll just go north with it. Okay, now let's get the... Uh, Counter sink here. Smooth that out a little. Let's see, I'll show you. So when it's hanging, that screw go right in that notch there, and it's not coming out. And that one. So I'll get you to see it right there. It'll go in there when it's hanging, and that's not coming out. There you go. Thanks for watching. And if you want to keep watching, well, I'm kind of done, but just re seal up the uh, screws here.
over to the uh, test spot on the wall here and it'll just hang right here the rest of the equipment I'll just get that should go perfect